the outlook for the year is a bit uh, uh, unpredictable because okay. we are in the middle of um, the cocoa season mm. and um, election comes off February 16. Yeah. So everything is inched on that. We expect some rallies around uh, from 1st February okay. uh, towards the mid-February. Mid of course, um, because restriction of movement during the election and of course okay. the unpredictability. Nobody knows how things are going to be and everything. So okay. we expect some spike during yeah. that period. Otherwise, uh, we expect the weather to be fine, and uh, we also expect that there will be more investments after the elections. Thank God it's early in the year uh, mm. in the cocoa sector. Okay, but I'd like you to speak to some of the challenges you foresee coming up in this year and some of the recurring challenges that have been in the industry and that has been holding, especially the Nigerian cocoa industry back from where many players in the industry think we should be among in the scheme of things. Yes, to be honest, um, I do not know presently if we can say there will be any major phenomena change. The reason is this. Um, we have seen this government, there was so much hope in 2015, and um, mm -hmm. they just have some few months to go in this administration. Uh, the question is, um, have, we able, have we been able to gain traction? Well, not so much. Cost of why, 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 do you, why do you say that we haven't gained Yeah, so because much there are some promises that ought to be in place that can make things work. For example, let me talk about cost of money. There's this um, Nexin um, Export Stimulation Funds, which government has announced and people have been accessing. But one would have thought that the accessing it to be faster so that they can see some quick wins, especially... So what are the bottlenecks? Really? Well, bottlenecks has to do with conditions, precedents, to draw down. I mean, okay. f you know, once the conditions are too stiff, for these companies, already they are in comatose, most of the cocoa processing factories, for example. They're already having, they're heavily jarred, they're already hoeing, and uh, what we expected was how to refinance all those debts so that they can be free to be able to access money and start running. As we speak now, most, the, the capacity utilization is just about 20%. Mm -hmm. Some of those factories are not working. And okay. the simple reason is no money. That's one. Then again, of course, on top of that, typical of Nigeria, there is a, throughout the la last year and even up to this moment, we still have problems with the port. So a lot of times, money is tied at the port. Uh, there was a case of one of us who had about 15 containers of uh, butter, cocoa butter, at the port last year. Now, for over 40 days, that's mm -hmm. dangerous. Number one, the product get melts and then is subjected to quality issues when it gets to Europe. Number two, that's money tied down. Last year, a, a, a container of butter is about 43, was about 43 million. So if you're talking of 15, you're talking of almost 800 million. I mean, that's dangerous for working capital position. That means you are locked up in the, at the port. Your money is locked up there. You have to pay banks interest for the money you have borrowed, your working capital. So you see, these things, they contract the uh, ability of, the, of, of, of those in the manufacturing to do well. So it's still making it a big struggle. We still believe government can help us out there. Let them fix these infrastructures. We'll be fine. Would you say that the players in the value addition end of the industry you know, are actually getting the shorter end of the stick? Yeah. They are not, it's, it's tough for the value addition guys, the processors. Yeah. Uh, the farmers, well, yeah, I mean, pretty well, they can uh, uh, get the advantage, which is encouraging too. I mean, we have seen people wanting to go into uh, farming, which is important because, again, Nigeria is very far from the potential we have. Nigeria is doing maybe, the last numbers I was looking at uh, predicting that this season we're doing between 260 and 320,000 tons. Okay. We can do 600,000 tons if we are serious. The kind of crop that, has, that we have around now can grow as the fruiting in two years. So if we are focused, if we can keep the policies and government is able to pursue it with dexterity. We'll get there. But, but top dollar in the industry is still in the second end, the people who are actually bringing out chocolate. You know, how, what is really holding back the Nigerian industry, the cocoa industry, from, you know, going from f uh, 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 maximizing the entire value chain? That's from the farmers, you know, then to the processors, and then to the people who are it's actually making... It. I think uh, cocoa is expensive. If you want to go into the chocolate business in Nigeria, then you are going to take away a lot of people out of it. They cannot participate there. Because uh, just imagine the cost of a cocoa, I mean, a bar of chocolate. Many Nigerians can afford it. 
But Nigerians are buying chocolate every day. No. The people you see buy it are people like you. Maybe middle class, upper class. Yeah. The glow guys who need this thing, they are not able to buy it. Because just take it, let me give you an example. Look at a, 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 a box, I mean, a tin of beverage, maybe Milo or Bonvita. I think it's doing about 1,300 now. Mm. Naira. How many people can afford it? But there are different variations of the, those products. And so I'm, I can even also believe that for chocolate, the same will also, will also appeal. They are different. They don't all have to be. Yeah, they are very expensive to chocolates, to even, even, even in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Western yes, world. Yes, it and comes also to priorities. Yeah. For example, if somebody that is earning below $30, $30 in a month, mm. he probably wants something more solid and, you know, to, to put in his tummy than going for chocolate. Chocolate is seen as luxury here. Yeah. It has economic, it has health benefits and so on and so forth, but the way things are in Nigeria for the poor is more of a luxury. How have the development finance institutions, you know, you, earlier you spoke about um, Nexin Bank, but uh, when I look at the wider players, look, look at organizations like the African Development Bank, we're looking at um, Afrexin Bank, we're looking at um, even the World Bank and um, other Af um, agencies. How are they, you know, how have they helped, especially in 2018? Let's do a review, you know, I the do not think we got so much help from a bank like um, Afrexin in 2018. ADB, through BOI, some of us were able to access money. The bulk of the expectation for us is in Nexum, accessing the 500 billion government has put on ground. And they are trying to work at that, to be honest. Well, work is just that, again, condition precedence. And in Nigeria, of course, there's some a, a bit of uh, bureaucracy mm -hmm. that extends time. For example, we are emphasizing to them that this is cocoa season. After March, April, we'll go to the light crop, even though we can run throughout the year. It's better for us to take advantage of the cocoa season. It's better for us to build up inventory while we're in the season. So when we get to the light crop, we blend. These right. are the things. We need them to be more, f I mean, they should, be, they should put some speed to these things, and everything will be fine. All right, then we'll keep our eyes and see how that um, sector is developing. Thank you so much for your time. I've been speaking to